this idea that uh, evoked the question. Peter Greenaway said that cinema is much too rich a medium to be left to storytellers. So our experimental filmmakers telling stories a different way or doing something completely different. In other words, do you know the film by Tony Conrad called The Flicker? It's 15 minutes of just black and white footage, black and white frames flickering. So the basic, could you comment on this idea that cinema is much too rich to be left to storytelling? And we're not trying to say storytelling's bad. We're just saying, you know, it's a moving image art form. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm totally with that, and uh, I think Stanley Kubrick would agree with that. I think that's why people go crazy watching Kubrick films, because frequently he just throws a narrative out. Uh, uh, the movie I just mentioned, Samsara, is a, 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 an experimental film, just no story to it. It's merely music and images, all shot in beautiful 70 millimeter. Um, so I completely agree, but at the same time, this is the beautiful thing about films, is you can gather up both, you can marry together both the symbolic way of relating information, like um, we did when ceremony and ritual were a primary aspect of the human endeavor, and it can also uh, tell a story. So, like they did around the campfire. And so we, we can do both. We can, and I think that's what Kubrick was really trying to do with 2001 Space Odyssey. He had been going to see a lot of the experimental films that were really big in the New York scene in the uh, 60s. Uh, I'm forgetting the guy's name now. Jordan. Jordan, Jordan Belson. Belson. Yeah, Jordan Belson, right? That's his name? Yeah. And, uh, and he was really a big fan of Jordan's work. And... Uh, and uh, the other, uh, yeah, I believe he was uh, Asian, Nam. Nam Kim Pike. Thank you. Very good. I was going to talk to someone who knows film history. And uh, I was really into that scene, too. Even though I was just a young kid, I was really into all those movies. And I, I originally, when I started out making films, I made films like those, not narrative. In fact, I didn't like narrative films. I was shared with Kubrick this idea that, you know, we can make symbolic films like Jordan Belson and uh, but what Kubrick did was he was because he was given a free reign to make whatever movie he wanted to make because he was helping the powers to be fake the Apollo moon landings what he did was he combined a narrative with symb uh, with experimental filmmaking and I believe created you know the greatest film ever made although I will say that Samsara might give 2001 a run for his life. That was good. It's funny because, you know, um, <clears throat> I was wondering if you could, uh, you're, you're an expert or well-versed in alchemy. It is, you've said this a couple times. You take two things in Merriam and you come up with a third new thing. Is that proper to, in alchemy world to say that's a tertium quid? Yeah, it, uh, alchemy, you know, the first alchemists were actually the Taoists, and the symbol of the yin-yang, famous symbol, that's, that, that's actually the alchemical symbol of joining opposites. Uh, Terence McKenna would always talk about uh, the, uh, the, uh, how, how you take two opposites and you place them together, and in that collision, you create a new thing, a new completely different thing, and so the Hegelian dialectic put into an art form, which is what alchemy is. And so that's why I read books that I don't agree with. Is I'm trying to create the, that kind of idea, that kind of uh, matrix, rewriting my, the, my brain in a way by having it collide with something I absolutely, fundamentally know I disagree with. And in that, and so alchemy is this, um, is using... Uh, fire and water uh, against each other, uh, making them uh, uh, conflict with each other. And in that uh, confliction, creating a, uh, a new synthesis, 
so uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think that honestly, I think if you're not living your life that way, you need to start living your life that way that because I think that in that there's a great wisdom, and you know, I. I I, I got on the radio and do interviews. I started like in 2005 just to publicize a couple of films I had made. And, you know, I, since then I've probably done two or 3,000 interviews. And for the life of me, I have no idea why I, everybody wants to talk to me. And because I, I, don't, I don't, don't really talk too much outside of doing interviews. I don't. I don't spend much time lecturing or, or t talking to other people in the way that I'm talking to you right now. Um, I just basically read a lot and, uh, and go to movies and study, and I'm pretty much of a loner. And what I've reached a conclusion is, is that uh, because I've decided to live my life that way, it's given me some kind of insights I, didn't, I wasn't even aware of until I started going public. And, uh, and now I think that it's, it's spreading, and I think a lot of people are beginning to realize that this is really the way to live your life. And so somehow I've become an elder. Of course, I am an elder, so that shouldn't surprise anybody. And, uh, uh, and which is something I never dreamed I would be. Although I will say this, 25 years ago this year, right now, 25 years ago, around October 12th, Terrence McKenna, who would get really angry at me because he wasn't a conspiracy theorist, and I was, and I am, uh, got mad at me one day and he said, Jay, Jay, you're so wrong. They, the people you think are running the world, have no idea what they're doing. And you watch and you bear this out. One day they're going to come to you and ask you if you know what the hell is going on. And by God, was he right? <laughs>